November 10th, 1975, Edmund Fitzgerald went down in Lake Superior, one of the most famous shipwrecks of all. And I'll tell you a little more about it and, and give a salute to those sailors and coming up next. Welcome back, everyone. As I, it's November 10th, 2022. 47 years ago today, Edmund Fitzgerald sank in Lake Superior in one of the deepest sections of the lake in Canadian waters. They were heading to actually right out here. They would have been there in a couple days had they not gone down in Lake Superior and three longs and two shorts is the traditional salute so sail on sailors and many of you may not know people have actually dove to the Edmund Fitzgerald 1995 Many people uh, led expeditions in both su actual manned submarines, unmanned roves, and two people actually, most people don't know this, dove to Edmund Fitzgerald using scuba gear. And they are known to be the only two people to have actually touched Edmund Fitzgerald. People in the subs obviously cannot touch the, the ship, but these two guys using Trimax and they were tech divers and they hold the record for deepest dive in the Great Lakes and deepest shipwreck dive. Went down well over 500 in, I believe it's, I thought it was 700 feet, but I think it's like 580 feet. took them six minutes to get to the ship. They looked around for six minutes and then took three hours coming back up on a decompression stops to get back to the surface to avoid getting the bends. And not long after that, the Ontario government, the Michigan government, the federal, United States federal government all put in a lot of um, new laws to protect the site and protect shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. And you can tell today it's going to be 70 degrees, but back in 1975 it was howling. There was a hurricane west winds, like the song said. And Today we have a hurricane down in Florida, but nothing like that here, you know, 12 miles from Canada. And um, you know, back to the laws, they enacted laws that said basically it was people could not photograph the Edmund Fitzgerald anymore without a permit because they realized that the crew was still well preserved and was still there with the ship. And it became illegal to dive to the ship and without a permit and photograph without a permit. But then in 2006, the Canadian government enacted a 500 meter zone around the shipwreck and you are not allowed to even side scan sonar in that section. You can't tow anything. There's a debate on whether or not you can use a recreational side scan sonar that is attached to your ship and capture images, but it's so deep that a recreational sonar would have a very hard time getting any... It does not really work at those depths. It's, it'd be 
I don't. I, you haven't seen anyone attempt it yet, or at least they, if they haven't gotten pictures, they haven't posted them for obvious reasons. Because it's not quite sure if if it's legal or not. It's definitely not legal to use a towfish submersible side scan sonar. That was that's clearly now um, prohibited, and it's also a little up in the air about where the ship is because people have, have went back and looked and said that the ship now um, possibly parts of it are actually in American waters. It's an American ship and it's always thought to be in Canadian waters but now they believe part of it is in American waters and part is in Canadian waters. So whether or not the Canadian law applies to people in American water is different but otherwise most people agree you shouldn't no one should ever attempt it but the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society actually did side scan it and those images have were controversial they are, appear to not be available anymore but Canada lots launched an investigation into them and said that they were, the Im side scan images they took were illegal. They came back and said they took the pictures with the side scan imaging radar before that law was passed, like in 2002, and it was updated in 2006 to include side scan. And they also said that they were outside of the 500 meter exclusion zone that they were 800 meters regardless you can't really find those pictures I was only able to find one side scan image from the Rochester Institute of Technology who scanned the ship I believe they had a per they got a legal permit to do it and it's the, really the only side scan image available and I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it and in that image you can see there's a big trench along side the, the ship leading most people to theorize that the list of the ship caused it to nosedive and it just basically dug the bottom of I believe it's in like I said I believe it's in 500 feet of water and the ship is over 700 people you can correct me in the comments I mean I'm just doing this off my head and I can't and I'm having a hard time here just kind of looking out over the lake today and basically it nose dived because of the list from water coming in through the vents and hit bottom and as it it dug a trench and then just broke in two halves and sank second half of the sank after it snapped. That, I think, believe is the going theory that most people accept those days. Just kind of a crazy thing. Water, what water can do and the power of water. Thanks for watching. Sail on, sailors. Stay safe.